So what I will tell you today uh, is something about the role of the internet in parliamentary elections in uh, Croatia. Uh, I uh, did with my colleagues uh, analysis of citizens and political parties' use of internet in uh, elections in Croatia in longitudinal perspective. Uh, we are still waiting for the data for uh, these uh, past elections. I believe that we are all fed up with the elections in Croatia at the moment, but uh, I promise I won't mention any parties or names of the candidates or uh, things like that. It will be more about the, uh, the data issue. Uh, and also, it is important to, to mention once when in CU you, you will uh, know uh, that you are all stressed out with the plagiarism issues. So I want to stress that this presentation was already presented at the workshop organized in the Paris uh, one uh, month ago. Uh, so the, the goal of this research that we are doing and preparing for uh, uh, publishing is a twofold. Uh, firstly, looking at the election service, we want to test how often citizens use internet to inform themselves about the elections and secondly, by testing the key functions of the party's web pages, the paper examines to which extent have political parties in Croatia used official web pages to inform and to engage citizens in 2007 and in 2015 parliamentary elections. Uh, to do that, uh, using data from public opinion surveys conducted by the Faculty of Political Science from 2003 to 2011, we first look at how often citizens use internet to inform themselves about the elections. As I already said, we are in a few days we, we are supposed to have and the data for 2015, which will be then a complete uh, survey and I believe we will have really interesting uh, data. Um, this research is uh, relevant for several reasons. One of them is of course uh, high internet penetration in Croatia, which is around 75%, meaning that around 75% uh, of citizens of Croatia are actually online uh, and this is uh, around uh, your uh, average in the European Union. Uh, expectedly the use of online tools in, in informing about elections has been increasing along with the advancement of technology and the growing number of internet users. Uh, as I already uh, stressed out, the election surveys conducted in 2003 and 2007 and uh, 2011 are conducted on the Faculty of Political Science as a part of uh, a wider project. And uh, all uh, surveys were done two weeks before parliamentary <coughs> elections. The data for 2015 will be uh, from the uh, survey conducted after the elections, but I think you that one uh, matter a lot. So the original questionnaire uh, was around 50 to 67 questions uh, depending on the uh, year of election. Um, so this is the slide for uh, 2003 where the question was how citizens informed themselves about the elections and political uh, parties. Uh, so we, had, we can see uh, from this slide that the um, what we are actually looking at, the, the most important thing for us is internet, that in 2003 uh, most, more than 80% of citizens uh, never used internet to inform themselves about the elections. That was the situation in 2003. Uh, in 2007, of course, uh, this is already changing because in the uh, internet area, four years are really like uh, eternity, I would say, and it's really rapidly uh, changing, but here we can see that it's like 70, uh, 60 something percent of people never use internet to inform dancers about the elections. And um, in 2011, it's around 51% uh, of people who never use use internet to inform dancers about the elections. I believe that the results for 2015 uh, will uh, also go in this direction, of course, uh, smalling this number of people who never or rarely use internet to inform themselves about the elections. Uh, 
Yeah, this is the comparison of the, uh, the years in a longitudinal uh, perspective, where you can see that this last uh, column is often, and this is really like in increasing significantly. So in 2011, we had uh, more than, uh, this is 10, around 30 something percent of people who use often and sometimes the internet to uh, get information about the uh, elections, parties, and uh, etc. Uh, interesting question that was included in the questionnaire in 2011 was also uh, did the parties and candidates try to contact you using any of these tools uh, where we are looking at the email and the social networks <coughs> Uh, which we are uh, allowed to use already in 2011, and we can see that uh, <coughs> almost uh, no one from political parties and candidates ever uh, tried to contact citizens uh, using uh, email and the social networks. So these tools were still not in use in 2011. It will be interesting to see uh, the results again for 2015. Uh, another uh, interesting point here is to uh, compare the age groups uh, which are using uh, internet for getting information about the elections and political parties and political uh, candidates uh, because it is an uh, assumption that only young people are using uh, internet and mostly for the fun but from this data we can uh, actually see that uh, almost all uh, all age groups use the uh, internet in the in same uh, manner to, to get information about the, uh, about the elections. Uh, so I already stressed uh, most of these uh, findings. Maybe also a very important uh, thing that came out from this research uh, is actually uh, use of daily print to get information about the, the um, uh, elections, uh, where we could see th that uh, in 2003 approximately 55% of examined voters use daily print often and sometimes. In 2007, 66% uh, of uh, citizens <coughs> use daily print often and sometimes, and in 2011 uh, there was 58% of uh, those who use internet uh, newspapers to, to inform themselves about the political parties and uh, maybe uh, this significant uh, increase in 2007 uh, could be explained by the appearance of creation tabloid newspapers first published in 2005 which is uh, 24 hours that we are all familiar uh, with. This was one uh, the result that was really surprising for me that actually print is not uh, uh, declining that much as we could expect. Actually, it was rise in 2007, uh, as we can see from this. Uh, also, interesting finding uh, related to the use of television as electoral information source. The results show that television is still the most important source of electoral information with around 90% of examined voters who use television often and sometimes in all three election cycles. So. The, the television, television is still uh, ruling. I think that the, the data for 2015 will be also very, uh, very similar. And some other uh, surveys also show that uh, the trust in um, in media, uh, the, the the people most trust the, to the television. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I already explained that the graph with the group, age groups, the, which show that internet is actually uh, equally represented among population under, under 30 and population above 51. In each group, 40% uh, of respondents said that they use internet often and sometimes to inform themselves about the elections, while 50% of respondents between the age 31 and 50 said they use internet often and sometimes. It also, of course, relates that the, in this age group from 31 to 50, people are the most interested in politics, so it's a kind of logic that they will use the internet for getting information about the elections 
uh, more and uh, using internet of course uh, which as we noted the challenge is usual impression that internet is used mainly by younger uh, voters um, I will switch this part uh, and we'll go to the second part of our research where we look closely into the, uh, into the key features of the party's website in order to answer how and if all, uh, all political parties in Croatia use the potential of their official web pages to inform and engage citizens in 2007 and 2015 uh, parliamentary elections. Uh, I will go further. So the sample used in this research were the web official uh, party websites in 2007 and 2015. In 2007 it was seven, uh, seven political parties and in 2015 there was eight of them and the parties were selected uh, uh, according to the real chances of winning parliamentary seats were, were included in the research. So we didn't include in the research parties that were not uh, close to the threshold. Um, the, the analysis, the content analysis was conducted one week before election day in 2007 2015. Um, and we used the coding sheet uh, which had uh, 43 uh, features. Uh, it was kind of <coughs> simplified coding sheet from uh, a more, uh, more complex research conducted by Lilacher at, uh, uh, at all. Uh, so I will show you now the, the coding sheet so that you can see actually uh, for which categories uh, we, uh, we tested the, the websites and we grouped them in uh, five uh, larger categories which are information, engagement, mobilization, interactivity and of course technical uh, details. And the findings are actually summed up in this small table uh, I'm always frustrated when I see small table and there is so much work after, after all this, so many zeros and ones, but then you put it all in uh, this small table. Uh, we use here indexes of the average number of features for each grouping, where we calculated scores by dividing the number of indicators present by the total number of features within that grouping. So for information, we, we got the uh, average number of features, uh, average index. For information in 2007, it was 0 0.65, and I will not read uh, all of them, but you see here the, the main categories and the uh, scores, and I think that you can um, already not notice actually that the results are very, very surprising because for 2015, we had a much worse performance of the web pages than for 2007. Which leads us to, to the discussion, um, showing that in the first part of our research, we identified significant growth in the use of Internet as election information uh, resource, and in the second part of our research, we conducted as I said, content analysis of relevant political parties' websites in order to find out if parties use potential of the internet to inform and to engage citizens. The results demonstrate that creation uh, parties partly fulfill what is called a traditional key function of political websites, which is information. So in the part where they were supposed to give certain information about the issues, uh, the 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 average index was uh, on a, a high level performance, but all other uh, scores were, were uh, uh, very, very low. Um, so I will, uh, comparing the results from elections, as I said, in 2007 and 2015, we can notice that party web pages in 2015 have worse performance in all examined categories than in 2007. Only in the mobilization category we see slight improvement in 2015. Uh, okay. uh, elections in 2015 were generally strongly influenced by the 
growing economic crisis and many parties announced at the beginning that they will have uh, small budgets for uh, campaigning and uh, things like that. So it could be explained partly with, uh, with the economic crisis and smaller budgets that for that reason the, the, the web pages they used actually were much worse than in ex almost like eight years ago. Uh, but however, this uh, cannot explain poor performance on the content part and this is especially true if we acknowledge that strategic and smart use of the websites may compensate for the lack of resources to campaign in the mainstream uh, media. I will not go now in the theories of normalization and equalization, uh, but actually it is um, uh, uh, the assumption that um, parties and political candidates will uh, perform much better on the, uh, on the web because it's uh, cheaper and of course it's an, and the smaller parties and the big parties will uh, equalize on the on the web because they all can have uh, uh, good content and uh, things like this but th th this was not the, the case on this uh, elections in uh, Croatia maybe we can discuss later what I would also be interested what do you think why is this so because it's really kind of surprising but one, uh, one of the explanations can also be, and that, that is kind of a uh, lack of this research, that we didn't include use of social media. So it could be that the trend completely switched and that the websites and web pages doesn't even have any function in parliamentary elections and that everything is actually on social media. Although that, uh, again, is interesting because all theories suggest and uh, other important examples as, uh, I don't know, uh, Obama and uh, uh, examples that we are mentioning all the time actually uh, stress that the web page is the place where you actually integrate everything. So still, e either if everything is now on social media, web page uh, should still be a place uh, where to find everything uh, integrated. And and one for a final conclusion, also the, the general lack of campaign strategy which affected also, could be that also affected the performance of parties' web pages. Thank you very much.